Hi, if you're watching this after the first part, I'm really proud of you. But if not, and you are really interested about the subject, I truly encourage you to go to watch the previous video on the topic, so that you would understand the context and get the rest of advices and the edifying words. English is not my native language, so for any mistakes, you can go to the comment section. How do you feel about speaking of porn or masturbation? It's something really uncomfortable, right? And it's a lot of shame for some of us in there, isn't it? But shame brings condemnation, shame brings guilt and fear, and shame hides sin and darkness. It keeps you bound, shame keeps you bound. One of the first thing to do is to get rid of shame. What did Adam and Eve do when they sinned? They hid from God because they were ashamed of him. Listen carefully to this. The man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man. Where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. The same happens when we sin. And we feel naked because of what we've done. We feel like someone stole our clothes, our holiness, our righteousness, and we've just discovered we have nothing to cover our shame. Wow. But God is still there in the garden. He's in the same place where we left him. So he asks, where are you? You haven't talked to me since hours or days or even weeks. You haven't laid your heart at my feet since last month. You're not the same as yesterday. You are terrified. You feel dirty even though I washed you with my own blood. What's happening? Do you understand what shame does to your relationship with your father? It destroys it. So stop being afraid and ashamed of the one who gave everything for you. The only thing the devil wants to do to you by tempting you is to separate you from God. Nothing more, just separation. Because he knows that in God's hands you find comfort. In God's word you find life. In God's presence you find healing. He knows it. So he wanna obstruct that. So don't let him, now that you know that, don't let him. In the darkest moment of your day, go to God. In the scariest moment, go to God. In the dirtiest moment, go to God. When you feel like a rich, go to God. When you feel good and happy and well, go to God. So, porn and masturbation is something almost all of us had to deal with at a certain point in our life. There's nothing to be ashamed of as long as you fight with it. I don't mean you should take a mic and go like, hey everybody, I'm struggling with porn and masturbation, yo. No, of course not. But there must be people in your life to talk about that, to confess when it happens or when you are tempted. So that you'd have somebody to pray for you, to fast with you, to ask you and to keep track of your actions and general condition. Not to try to control you, but to be there in need, to support you, to encourage you and even to reprimand when the situation asks. That's why you should find a mature man with a strong relationship with God, maybe a, a pastor or a church leader or a man whose life you know it's clean and lived in the obedience of God. Or of course a woman if you are a woman or a girl. And be honest to him, like don't try to hide things because there will be no use of that relationship. A second thing to do as you probably have realized is to stop watching porn and practice masturbation. You cannot overcome these thoughts and carnal desires as long as you feed yourself with trash. And know that there are studies showing that pornographic images have a huge impact on your minds and they need like several years to be forgotten or changed. If you want a changed and reborn mind, start consuming different things, like holy things. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus is the word of God. When you will start to feed yourself with that food, you won't feel the need to go again to the trash you consumed before. I know it's hard. I know you are already tired of trying and hoping that one day you'll be set free of these things. But what if you would start to fight it God's way, not yours? Like not by your power, not by your strength. What if you realized God already offered you the victory? In John, Jesus says, the ruler of this world, meaning the devil who was possessing Judah, is coming. He has no claim on me. And look throughout the translations. It says, he has no hold over me. He has no power over me. He has no claim on me. In me, he has nothing. 
he has nothing to use against me. And what Jesus meant is that the devil had nothing in common with him, nothing to use against him, like no weapon that would prosper, nothing to entice him, nothing to tempt him with, nothing to accuse him of. Because Jesus knew his identity, he knew who he was. When temptation comes, what if you ran to the Father instead of playing games with the devil? Don't even listen to him, don't even let him talk. Instead, you take the lead, you use the word of God to confront him. Remind him that he has nothing on you, nothing in common with you, nothing to claim on you, no power over you. Do you believe that? There is a course about how to be set free of porn of John Bevere and it's gold. I've been through all the lessons and they are really helpful. I'm gonna leave the link in the description among other verses that may be helpful to you in this fight. Remember from the last video on the topic, the words do have power, so use them wisely and daily. When we walk by faith, there's no room for the devil's lies. They can't mix. We are being sanctified day by day and with healing come the desire and the ability to live a holy life. A third thing to do is not to make all this uh, living and working with God just a reason for your healing. I've talked to some people who struggle with the same uh, sex attraction and they kind of have the expectation of God to do like that and give them a recipe and all the struggle to disappear. But God doesn't work like that. Of course he can do that, he can stop that attraction once and for all, he can do that with all kinds of sins. I know people who experienced that, but God is not our servant nor puppy to be treated like that. For me in my case, if I just experienced liberation after the first prayer I made on this topic, uh, I wouldn't have come closer to God, I wouldn't have to God to know him more and build the relationship we have today. For God wants something more and much better for us than just to be delivered and live a mediocre life, haven't you got it? So have faith, be patient and humble yourself. And just seek to grow the intimacy between you and your father. Let him work on his timing because he just know the right moment to make everything beautiful. Meanwhile, you focus your heart on his. A fourth thing to consider is to avoid uncomfortable or even dangerous circumstances. And here you're gonna need wisdom. If you don't have it, ask God and you shall receive it. Avoid watching movies or listening to music that can produce something ugly in your mind, especially sexual content or content that may instill something like a bad or inappropriate attitude inside you. If you have bad influences in your life like toxic people or relationships or just people that don't help you edify your spiritual life, just Put some distance between you and those people or even if the situation asks, break those relationships. You don't have to be rude, you just explain the situation and that you're setting up your priorities and that for a period it's better to be like that. Don't stay in alone in the same house with someone who struggles with the same things, it may end up ugly. Don't go in places where your intimacy may be put under risk or places where you might see someone naked or stuff like that. Yeah, they're not rules and conditions for forever, but they are to protect you as you are vulnerable and just at the beginning of the process and the whole journey. Like, that's why I said you're gonna need wisdom. You have to figure it out for yourself which are the things that uh, make you feel vulner vulnerable and, make you, and may lead you to temptations. When you feel something doesn't feel right, don't ignore it, it might be a warning. And as I said in the previous video, be vigilant and sober, always. One last thing to think about uh, is the origin of the same-sex attraction. I'm almost sure that nobody is born this way. I used to think I had been like that since the beginning, but I hadn't. You can take some days to pray about it, to fast, to prepare your heart, and when you are ready, you, come back, you can go back in time and uh, like analyze your life since early childhood. Usually it comes from the relationship with your parents or someone very close. Or also it can be an abuse or a tragic event. But usually it can be an abusive parent, an absent parent or an overprotective parent. Also it might be some gestures or something someone told you or showed you while you were a kid and it might be insignificant now but as a kid it affects you, your whole growth and de development. You can take some papers and a pen and to write a letter to your old and little self. One of my friends recommended me this thing when I still believed I was born this way. I prayed several days, I fasted and after that I started to write to the little Victor. I, I wrote a lot of stuff, like all kinds of stuff about uh, what he had been through, about the things that are going to happen like in the future for him, um, about 
people in his life situations uncomfortable situations. It took me about two hours, six papers and a lot of tears because there were some very painful ones. But it brings liberation afterwards and it helps you to understand and to see where the problems have been. And if there is something to solve, you can do that. And listen, you don't have to be afraid of your future, like thinking about whether you'll feel attracted to your wife or not, um, stuff like that. Of course you will. Just have faith that everything will happen at the right time. Just understand that is the devil's voice and be aware of it. Learn just not to receive anything from what he says. Also remember that Jesus said, in your weakness, my grace is sufficient for you. Because he's not like us. He doesn't just solve a temporary problem like for now and then send us back. But he empowers us by his grace to live transformed lives. And actually the word grace means something more than just an undeserved gift. It also means the empowerment of God to live a life following his will. And Jesus said, so if your sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? And from my experience, I've got to know that when something doesn't go well, it's always something about me. Because God is the same, He's always faithful and right. He's unchanging and His grace and mercy never run dry. It's always about us and just whether we are willing to receive His free gift of grace He constantly offers. The world is a pretty dangerous place. It's dangerous if you're not strongly rooted in Jesus. And it's dangerous because it's under the authority of the devil. But that's not the way things always had been. At the beginning, the earth was under man's control. God gave Adam the authority to rule over the world, but he lost it when he fell into sin. But now we have the ability through Jesus to regain that power and authority to fight the darkness. Yes, the world might be a dangerous place, but it wasn't dangerous for Jesus. Actually, he said he had already overcome the world. And if we are of Jesus, we have to walk in the same power, in the same authority and in the same rulership. So when temptation comes, you can stand against it. Be stubborn and ambitious. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. If you are careful, you notice that it doesn't say so that it might not happen to you or so that you may not face temptation, but instead it says so that you can endure it. To be tempted is not a sin, but it's important what are you doing while being tempted and which are the consequences of that temptation. Humble yourselves before God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. A lot of people just follow the second rule. They just want to resist the devil and accept him to live and everything to be flawless. But it doesn't say in vain that we should humble ourselves before God, submit to his word, to his authority and his empowerment that can make us strong enough to be firm like some soldiers. And only then we will be able to resist the devil so that he would flee from us. Pray for the Holy Spirit to strengthen you and to make you sensible to his voice like whatever and whenever. And whatever you do, be in a continuous communion with him. And when you feel in your spirit that something is not okay, just avoid that thing and go to talk with God about it. You'll get to see all kinds of people that at a certain point give up their working with God and follow some different teachings just because they are easier. Don't follow their example. Jesus never promised it's gonna be easy. Actually, he says, take heart, I have already conquered the world. By the way, I'm writing a book on this topic. You can follow my blog victormos.com to be notified when it's gonna be out. Also, I send weekly newsletters about encouragement, uh, positive thinking, uh, good habits for a better life so you might be interested. And for any other questions, message me on Instagram and Facebook. Bless you all guys. Bye.